was that feeling of confusion and not knowing where I was and being very inept That's a huge important part of um, the race which was finding my way and I had no idea so I was so reliant on you which was, was alright until we were in the wood lost <laughs> lost <laughs> so we wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily do London to Brighton again straight away until the negative emotions have, have disappeared. Yes. And that's where I came in with the childbirth thing. Never again, never again, never again. But then the, the negatives are going to fade away, aren't they? Yes, the they London are. London to Brighton negatives. And because I've had this before with <clears throat> marathon running and with running completely, I've gone, I'll never run another marathon. And that I've been running marathons for 27 years. And I've said the same with running on occasions when it's been very hard. And I've had the same experience in a race where I've been running an actual race and thought, that's it. I, don't I never thought this. that London to Brighton. I'm, okay. At no stage do I think, why am I doing this? I'm never doing this again. Even falling over, going up Ditching Beacon <laughs> and not being able to get my legs. Actually, I, I never, I never thought, I'm right. not doing it again. No, I All the way around, I knew that, that I was, I was going to do more ultras. In the race, what was your most memorable bit, or have you got a few memorable bits, or is it a whole, yeah, what's your experience? It's a bit of a timeline, really. Originally, the first nine miles through that rain, and thinking, this is brilliant because it's so tough. It's going to be so, so tough, not just the distance, but the terrain, the navigation, and to have the sort of the, the, the southwesterly gale in your face for 11 hours. That was, a, that was a moment when I thought, this is going to be tougher than we've ever, ever considered. I said to you at one stage, no, this is what I was worried of. This is the only thing that's going to stop me. And I cramped in my hamstrings. They just, just both cramped. And I ended up walking for, what, 90 seconds. Yes. And I gradually built up to a, a jog. But every time we got to soft sections, every time we got to the trail sections, I was flying. And then we got onto the road, and you were flying, and I was struggling. We had the, the, and the what about the last three miles then? That was all road. Yeah, that, but the, you're running on adrenaline then. It was like when we got lost in the woods. Yeah. And I, was, I could have run six minute miles. Yeah. Because I was so angry. Because the, the emotion, well, the, the, the emotion of anger replaced the emotion of pain. And were you angry with yourself? Yeah, you angry with stupidity. Pain? Just yeah. stupidity, just not holding the map at the right angle to know where north was to be able to find our way. And I, I knew exactly you. where we were. Once we got on the trail, I could see well, where I we were. I said to you, go. I don't think I'm going to finish. And at that point, I, I think that when I said, I don't, I don't know if I can finish this, I think at that point I didn't know if I could. And you said, of course you can, do you? I don't feel so great myself. That was the best thing you could have said because it took me out of my own misery and my own... I don't know, Everyone misery. feels the same. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it was that place of... I think on the camera I do actually say I've never felt so bad as this in my entire life. And at that moment, that was that complete moment of being in the moment of awfulness and my whole body was exhausted and low in blood sugar and we'd been lost and we were but cold. But the, the low blood sugar was because we were lost for 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I ran out of, out, out of, out of drink, so electrolyte was gone. I had no more gels, no Jaffa cakes, no nothing. And so we were both low because we'd spent the extra 40 minutes, and yeah. that was the problem. Yeah. So not only did we lose 40 minutes on the race, we probably ran slower for the next hour and a half because we were so low on blood sugar. We were kind of catching up. That 40 minutes was... <laughs> that's, I'm still <laughs> hating myself for it, still beating myself up And I it. never, I never, I just kind of <clears throat> was aware of the effect it had in testing. It was an internal lowering, and I didn't respond as you did. You responded with anger and with adrenaline. I can see without even recognising it. I, I kind of did some sort of philosophicals, well, you know, so what, we've got lost, that's the right deal with it, and I've got lost in life, so that's fine. And I did this philosophical self-talk, but I went down, even mm -hmm. so. So I kind of, you know, got low blood sugar, didn't think I'd finish. But when, no, it was when you said, I don't feel so great myself to you, that that really shifted me into a different um, focus. And I thought, no one's feeling good. We've run 40 miles, none of us feel good. Mm -hmm. And then I just... Then I did the process you did with the cramping, and I thought, even if I have to walk to Brighton, I'll get there. And even if Jim leaves me, and you know, I was completely aware that that would be fine if you did, I would get there. And that was what the change. So interesting about this, um, this place that now I know about a little bit about ultra running, having done one, that you go into a place of kind of being so present because it's the only way to get through it. But then you almost forget everything because it's only I'm, I remember things retrospectively, yeah. and I suddenly remember. And I saw a picture, the point where I was feeling really bad across the muddy field. Um, <clears throat> Angela and Simon ran with me across the field. You'd gone ahead, and there's, you know, I'd forgotten all about that. They ran beside me and kept encouraging words. And then it was only when I saw Nikki's photo, 
of these two writing beside me that I remembered it. Yeah. <clears throat> and, I mean, have you found memories have come back more as you've gone, or was it? Uh, not, not, not so. No, because I, I had. Not, not, not really. No, I've, I've got pretty vivid memories of, of all the way through. Looking at all the pictures at different, I, I knew what was going on, what I was thinking, what I was feeling, oh. going all, all the way through. I haven't banished any of it. Oh, that's I'd pretty much. I think I've it, been it re, yeah, I've been reclaiming mine rather than. I'm not sure whether that, I'm not sure what I did, but it definitely feels like I was in an altered state of consciousness at some level. Yeah. That I then having to be remembering things, yeah. a bit like being drunk and being. That was interesting because I was I was so focused on the map and navigating. <laughs> I was looking at you were. <laughs> So no. I think you're, you're, you had extra resources to be able to drift off and yes. go wherever you wanted because all you had to do was sort of follow me, which yeah, it was absolutely fine. I, I totally well, accepted moment, that. This is a negotiation of our relationship. As, the, um, as our ultra running continues, you might not feel quite the same if I remain inept. Yeah. <laughs> we might renegotiate the So term. I think that's probably how you had spare resources to go off into the different places. Yes, of course. Whereas I was just focused on you know, map, where I was, what page I was and everything, which is why I was so angry when we, when we got lost. It was totally my, my responsibility. Yes. I, don't, I didn't find it as physically challenging as I thought I was going to. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest, I thought it was going to ruin me. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it didn't. And it, learning that it's a two-point race for Mont Blanc yes. rather than a one-point race yeah. has made me think, crikey, that was tough, but I, I still had capacity. I still, I could, have, I could have gone on. If someone had said run another 10 miles, I could have done. The, the two points just um, what I was really excited about because I hadn't known about the point system because you said to me, you were to explain to me when we ran last that to compete in certain events, particularly Mont Blanc is the hardest race in Europe, isn't it? And particularly, so that was the one why you mentioned that one, but to compete in certain events you have to have points and you gain points by finishing within the cut-off time and they get awarded points. And we got awarded two points for, for um, London to Brighton and I feel quite excited about my... I, I, thought it'd be, I thought it'd be a one-pointer, <laughs> yeah. you know, and for it to be two points, half what you need to get in to, to qualify for, yes. for Mont Blanc um, has made me think, maybe I can do Mont Blanc. Whereas had it been only one point, yeah. I thought, well, Mont Blanc's four times tougher than that. that that's hard going. But the the mountains also, the mountains have always beckoned me because um, in the 80s I used to do mountain running and absolutely loved it. And when I went out to did mountain running in Switzerland. When I went out to Switzerland, I used to feel this total peace inside myself. And I just, there was just something magic about them. And I, I, learned, I learned how to bring that back with me. Because although I used to project that it was the mountains that gave it to me, I then learned how to have the mountain sort of energy within me in my life. But actually to go and do something like Mont Blanc, which goes through, how many countries? Starts in France, cuts around through Italy into Switzerland and back into France again. Wow. So you're just running a electric circuit of, wow. of Mont Blanc. So. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's left us feeling positive yeah. about the future. Yeah, definitely. It's not scared us away from doing ultras. No, it's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's definitely um, given me a, a sense of a new career opening up, of being able to sort of um, run into the future, but to have a new event to do. Or, or events, um, and for you, is that similar, similar sort of thing? Yeah. yeah, to be able to say, you know, you're an ultra runner. Yeah. Um, and to to sort of find a new, a new, new challenge, a new yeah. running challenge. Yeah. Um, because you just keep the forward momentum and carrying on doing new things in new parts of the world, and I think that sort of marries that nicely with ultra running. So it hasn't scared me away. Um, you know, but it certainly certainly left a lot of questions as well about, you know. What what are my what are my sort of frailties and what am I what is my capacity? How far can I go? Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest question. And maybe running something like Mont Blanc will you know it'll, it'll break me. In which case, fine. I know I know a lot yeah. of my limits. Or it may, of course, expand even further. We might be running around the world. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I um I've always had this idea for many for quite some years of of kind of creating my own journeys whether that was writing about them, whether it was raising money. And so this sort of marries up with, with that. Whether, um, you know, whether, is there a limit? Is there an end? Is there a finish line?